Christmas. I wish you every blessing as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we open our hearts today, we listen to the Word of God, the message given so long ago, the message of good news. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. This is recorded for us in Luke chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. Heavenly Father, on this Christmas day, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the good news that unto us the Saviour is born, who is Christ the Lord. As we consider this good news again today, may the reality of your love and grace permeate our hearts. We thank and bless and praise and worship you and ask your blessing upon this message. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to be more sensitive to you and to love you more. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. My beloved friends, we all love to get good news, don't we? Personally, Linda and I received some very fantastic, great news earlier this year. We got the news that our son and daughter-in-law are expecting a baby. We're going to be grandparents next year. We are overjoyed and we are now living in that eager expectation. The birth of a child is such a miracle, such a wonderful and beautiful thing. And we look forward to it. It's usually associated with great joy. As I've been thinking about that, I've been thinking about how did Joseph and Mary feel? First, when Joseph got the news, he felt very disappointed. He thought that Mary had been unfaithful to him. And he was going to quietly divorce her because they were betrothed to be married. But then God appeared to him and told him, Joseph, don't leave her. That which is in her is of me. It's of the Holy Spirit. She has been faithful to you. The child she will bear is my son, the Son of God. And Joseph was faithful. Mary was faithful. And so we have the great news that a child is born. A child who is not just like any other child. The Son of God. We celebrate the birth. Of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the birth of one who has never been before and will never be again. The birth of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God himself came down from heaven, born of a virgin, and he came for you and he came for me. That's the good news. This is great news if we understand the meaning and if we believe in him. Jesus came to this world for us. He came as God's gift to us. He is the manifestation of the love of God. And he came for all people. Listen again to what the angel said. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. That includes you and me. For today in the city of David, there's been born for you a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. A Saviour is born. He is Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the Saviour. He came for one purpose. He came to die. We have Christmas in order for us to have Easter. He came to lay down his life for us. At the age of 33, he did just that. He came to shed his innocent and holy blood, to atone for our sins, to pay our sin debt, 
to save us from having to spend eternity lost in hell. My friends, that is great news. It's more than good news, it's great news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved you, my dear friend, that he sent Jesus. That we can have forgiveness for our sins and we may inherit eternal life. Jesus the Christ is God's gift of love to us. He is the best gift ever. He is the best gift that anyone can receive. Because the blessings of this gift are eternal. He is the perfect and complete gift in every way. Truly the gift that keeps on giving in a very positive way. Every other gift we receive fades with time, loses its gloss after a while. Things break, they wear out, they may lose their value or significance. But the gift that God gave us at Christmas, this gift is eternal. It never grows old, it never wears out, it never loses its meaning. We need to be clear that salvation is a gift. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift and we can only receive it. We certainly don't deserve God's love and favour, but in his love and mercy he bestows his grace upon us. And that is why we all love the song Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. He loves each and every one of us so very much. We need to understand that we need this gift. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, we are lost. We do not have eternal life. Without Jesus Christ, we have no hope in the next life. We have no hope for eternity. We will exist forever. Our soul and spirit never die. God created man to live forever. But the problem is that the wages of sin is death. By virtue of sin, man became mortal. Sin not only brought about physical death, but also eternal death. And eternal death is to be forever existing, but in total darkness, in hell, in solitary confinement in your sins forever and ever. But God created us for fellowship with him. And he found a way for us to be saved from our sin and for him to still be just and pure and holy. And that was why we have Christmas. That is the reason for the season. That is why he sent Jesus into the world as our savior. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we receive the gift of salvation, as we repent of our sins, we are free from the penalty of sin. And that means that we have eternal life. We will exist eternally with him in heaven. At the hour God is appointed, we will die. And then at the hour God is appointed, we will be raised from death. And we will receive a new and a resurrected body. And we will live with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever in the new heaven and the new earth that will come about. And life there will be very different to anything we experience here. Here along with the good and happy days like Christmas Day, we have the bad days. We have the sad days. We receive good news and we receive bad news. And far too often also we receive sad news. In the new kingdom, in the new life, there's nothing negative. I know that's extremely hard to imagine because we have so much negativity and bad things happening around us all the time. Nothing bad, nothing negative. Think about it. You will have a new and a perfect body that will never grow old, that will never fail you, that will never experience sickness, that will not know pain. Again, it's very difficult to imagine. 
But that is what we have to look forward to. Paul quoted Isaiah, But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and which not have entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. God's gift is, is amazing. It's indescribable. We can't really fully comprehend it. In order to help us, Jesus gave John a revelation, a look into the future, and told him to write it down. And he did. And it's the last book of the Bible. And in chapter 21 we read, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. He will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. The first things have passed away. Hallelujah. My friends, I love to read this passage often. It's like a precious jewel. It's like a pearl. It strengthens me. It gives me hope. It inspires me not to give up, but to keep going. It's a precious, precious gift. If someone gives you something very precious, something very valuable, then you take care of it. No doubt you like to take it out and have a look at it as often as possible. And when you do, you think about the person that gave it to you. Our loving Heavenly Father has given us His Son. And that gift of His Son is that complete and perfect gift. It includes life here and in eternity. And this is something far more precious than anything else anybody can give you. And we should often look at this and think about it and thank Him and bless Him and praise Him and glorify Him and honour His name. David wrote in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of His benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Never forget what God has done for you. Remind yourself of his great love and mercy every day. A little bit further in the psalm, David writes, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Do you see what a wonderful gift God has given us through Jesus? And that's not only all. There's more. There's more. We have his abiding presence with us now and always. One of the names given to Jesus was Emmanuel. Emmanuel. It means God with us. He is with us. And when we believe in him, he abides in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. He is with us and He is on our side. He's for us. As Paul wrote, if God is for us, who is against us? Again, victory. Christ Jesus lives in our hearts and if we trust in Him, then He leads us and He guides us all the way. He is with us always. And when the time comes for us to leave this life, 
to draw our last breath in this body, then he will be there to present our soul and spirit to the Father. And at the resurrection, we will be together with him and with them forever. We will no longer live by faith, but we will live by sight. Good news, great news, fantastic news. My friend, if you have received God's gift, then you have the greatest gift of all time. Know that your sins are forgiven, death is defeated, and you will live forever with him. The good news is that the best is not behind you, the best lies ahead. And if you haven't as yet received the gift, then please do it today. Don't put it off. Don't think, well, one day I'll think about it. This may be your last day. This may be your last chance. God loves you so very much. And he's inviting you to acknowledge your sin, repent, open your heart and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. And then you have received the greatest gift. And you can say to people, I've got some good news. I've got some great news. I've been saved and I want to tell you about Jesus. God bless you. Have a very merry and blessed Christmas. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you for this great message that you bring to us. A message of great joy, which shall be for all people, for all who receive your gift. That unto us a Saviour is born. Thank you. And this Saviour is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. Lord Jesus, thank you that you came into this world, that you humbled yourself, and you came and lived among us, and we beheld your glory, the glory of God's only begotten Son. And you went that road to Calvary, and you laid down your life for us, so that we may have eternal life, forgiveness for sins. You paid our sin debt in full, and we are so grateful for that. And on this Christmas day, Lord, we come to you and you and we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. We ask, Lord, that you would bless and keep us. We pray, Lord, that your light would shine through us. We ask your blessing over those of our loved ones, Lord. We ask your blessing over our gatherings. We ask your blessing over this time and ask, Lord, for your mercy. We pray especially for those who are suffering in these days. We think of those in the Ukraine. We think of those around the world who are suffering from various conflicts and different things that are going on, man-made disasters, natural disasters. Lord, have mercy. We thank you that one of your names is Emmanuel, God with us, and that if we believe in you, you are always with us, and nothing ever happens outside your knowledge. So we, Lord, just commit all to you. On this day and we ask your blessing and everything we would pray we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Once again, a very, very blessed and Merry Christmas to all of you.